Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who shines in glory, clothes us in compassion, and bears gifts of mercy for all. Let us confess our sin with confidence in God's promise of forgiveness. God, wonderful counselor, we confess and chosen our own way. We have not made room for you in our hearts or in our world. We have lived in fear. We have not welcomed the outcast or the stranger. We desire gifts that will not endure. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, and open us to receive the peace of Jesus dwelling in us. God's loving kindness has appeared to us in Christ, our Savior. We are saved by God's mercy poured out on us richly. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Through the Holy Spirit living in you, God give you faith to trust Jesus, who is love born and revealed for you, now and always. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us listen to God's word as we read, first of all, from Isaiah. This was written during the Great Exile, during the 500 BC, where the author is looking forward to the reuniting of the people of Israel uh, back in Jerusalem. Uh, In 721, the Assyrians came down and packed off uh, the whole northern tribes. And then in in the uh, early 1500s, Babylon came down and took Jerusalem. And so this is uh, the prophet Isaiah of the, of the exile, looking forward to that time when all people will be united. <clears throat> but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you because you are precious in my sight and my and honored and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring you my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Let us continue to listen as we read responsively from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory, you gods, name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. 
and God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and, and strip the and strips the forest bare. And the temple of the Lord are all crying, Glory. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on him, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel on this day of the baptism of our Lord, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord. As the people were filled with expectation... And all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator, from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. In a community where I used to live, in Ontario, Oregon, came to know a member of the congregation who was an English teacher. She enlightened me a little bit about some of the situations that her students get into from time to time, involving their own families. She says, there was this one bright student, this really wonderful student, a young, young lady. She hadn't been showing up for school. And I started to inquire about this a little bit. She learned a little bit of the backstory of why this young gal wasn't showing up. It turns out she was a member of a large family Both parents had to work really several jobs in order to make ends meet. Large family, which included siblings, many, uh, a number of siblings under school age. And her parents had decided that it's better for this young lady to skip school, really to withdraw for all intents and purposes to care for the young siblings rather than finish school. 
I'm going to let that story just sit for a moment. We continue today in this season after Epiphany. It's a season of many declarations from God, declarations about who we are, about who Christ Jesus is for the world. I have called you by name, you are mine. This is from today's reading from Isaiah. Think of the power of those words. I have called you by name. You are mine. God is speaking to a human community. The one who speaks these words is one who in the end loves the people of Israel, even if it takes decades for them to get back home from exile. You and I are grafted into that same spiritual family tree through Christ. So this is part of our heritage as well. God declares to the people, I have called you by name. You are mine. And this is not always the, the most positive thing to hear. There's a way that we can use those very same words on one another and mean something very different. So recall now what this young, young woman has had to do. Right? Leave school for all, all of a school year and care for her young siblings. Well, parents say, you belong to us. We named you. Hmm. There are other complexities to that picture, but what I find myself thinking on the most is this. Here's a talented and driven student who begins to fall farther behind in her schoolwork, perhaps even drop out of school. And this was especially true for girls in that community. One of the other pieces to that complex picture is that there's some kind of force in the family that wants to keep the older child back, pull them into a role that they have to fill, no matter their skills or desires. There are some who try to hold power over others, perhaps in families, spousal relationships, or others. You are mine. You are mine. You can't try this or that thing. That's not what our family does. We need your help around here. You can't just do what you want. You belong to us. And if you strike out on your own, you'll be betraying us, the very people who named you. If you leave, don't bother coming back. So as parents or others who are in an authority role, it takes courage to move from that perspective and toward God's perspective. God's perspective is one where the people who need to hear God's declarations are those who are moving from bondage to freedom. God is freeing the people once again, opening their future up for freedom, for joy, for the worship of God. And this is just what Israel needs to hear. They have an ancient name given to them by God. I named you, I have called you by name, you are mine. They belong not to the Babylonians, not to any other neighboring power, but to God Almighty, the one who can rescue them from Egypt and bring them to a new land Rescue them from Babylon. Bring them back home. They needed to hear and see a vision of freedom. In the verses following, we continue to hear a voice of love. You are precious in the sight of God. God says to you this day, I love you. I love you. The reading from Isaiah has God even trading other peoples so that God can have Israel, which is something that's difficult to hear. I hope and trust that it's a temporary attitude in God. 
Beautiful declarations from God. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are precious in my sight. And I love you. I could just listen to those all day long. How about you? Yeah. And so now come with me to the riverbank where we have John and Jesus. Maybe we are like the others around us. There's a lot of questioning going on about who this John is. Man, does he look strange. He looks like a prophet from hundreds of years ago. He's fiery in his speech. And he wants to see lifestyles changing. He wants to see lifestyles that better reflect the goodness of God. He doesn't let up. He doesn't even let it stop with himself. He calls us to pay attention to one who is coming after him. He points to yet another person thought to be even more powerful. The person who's coming is one who will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus is baptized. I don't know, maybe the water extinguished all that fire that was supposed to come in the person of Christ. The Holy Spirit descends like a dove, and then a voice is calling out to Jesus, speaking right into his heart, you are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. Wow. Declarations, one after another. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are precious in my sight. I love you. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. There are a lot of unanswered questions about Jesus' baptism. I don't think that we could commit to the idea that for him, for Jesus, baptism was a washing away of sin. Maybe it's more than that for us as well. Maybe Jesus was ordained into his mission that day. Maybe it's like that for for us too. But maybe it also has to do with that voice of God claiming Jesus, claiming Jesus, speaking aloud into Jesus' heart, declaring this eternal love and affirming him even before he's lifted a finger in ministry there's something so very wonderful about God expressing all of this to Jesus it helps us to know that we need to speak and hear affirmations from one another as well we shouldn't be stingy with what we want to say especially if it helps others to live more fully into their God-given freedom. God is speaking all of this into your heart today too, dear friends. You'll do so much more from this day forward because you belong to Christ and you're part of the body of Christ. God is very pleased with you. You will mention someone in your heart in prayer. You will reach out to one who is grieving. You will sacrifice for a greater good. You will extend a hand of welcome to someone who seems so very different. God is well pleased with that ministry of Christ that's that's happening and that will happen through your life. But also, you have folks in your own life who need to hear from you. There are people who have, for example, sunk into depression, who would have such a better day if they simply knew that you were thinking of them. They need to hear you say, you are my friend, you are precious to me. May you hear these things too when you need to hear them and even when you don't. There are people who need to hear that you support their creative spirit. For example, 
You're really showing a passion for the arts, for writing. The world needs what you have to offer. I will always be eager to see what you produce. Words of encouragement, declarations of belonging and love. All of this is part of God's ministry in the world. Today, God gives us voice to seek out, to notice, and to call out the good that we see, but to hear it first. In this hymn that we are about to sing, God is really singing to us. Take that to heart. And then go one step further and realize that through you, whether you're singing on key or not, through you, God is singing to your neighbor. Your neighbor needs to hear a message of love from God. Let's sing. With the whole Christian church on earth, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. So it's the living and the dead. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, for the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Pour out your spirit upon us and enliven us for mission. Draw us together in love that we may be one. Lead us in the way of your beloved Son. Lord, in your mercy. For the earth... Sustain oceans and seas, rivers and lakes, marshes and wetlands. Watch over dormant plants and hibernating animals as they rest in your care. Renew your creation and protect all creatures from harm. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, inspire leaders to work for the common good. Grant courage to those who put themselves at risk to protect others. Turn us away from violence and teach us to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, protect children and vulnerable adults who depend on others to provide for their daily care. Uphold those who struggle with depression Console the grieving and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly, bless the newly baptized and our most recent baptism, Colt Kelly Melton. Renew your children in the covenant of baptism. Empower us by your loving spirit to serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, especially Ryan McMahon and Jane Wallace. Hold us safe in your arms of mercy and bring us with them into your promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the same with one another. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table that we may come to the help of all in need through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him, your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Yes. 
Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look, for, we look with hope for his coming. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Let us pray. O God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Uh, we've had a, a number of ladies sign up for the women's retreat. There are still a few spots left. So if you're checking your calendar and trying to decide, February 8th through the 10th, we'll be in Plain at the Grunewald Guild, and it should be a wonderful time, and yes, they have snow, so it'll be a little little chilly, but it'll be a lot of fun. So um, think about that weekend, and the sign-up is next to um, the office. This seems to be a retreat time. Uh, the men are going to be up at uh, Tall Timber on the 1st to the 3rd uh, for their retreat. Um, we'd like to have as many as possible signed up by this Friday. Uh, and this will give Tall Timber a little heads up as to how many people to expect and they can plan accordingly. So. Uh, if you're planning on going, and we encourage you to do so, uh, there's a sign-up sheet there by Jen's door. Uh, place a, uh, a check in the uh, uh, offering or slip it through the financial secretary's door uh, with your name on it indicating and write, write, write to check out the, to Grace Lutheran. And uh, uh, so, men... Go to work. Okay. Good morning. 
I wanted to take a minute to uh, discuss the budget briefly. A uh, small background on this, the council met in December to put together based on what our commitments came in to grace uh, an estimate of what we would be looking to spend in all the different areas of giving for the year. Once that was done, uh, we put that through the process to you, the congregation, for two Sundays. So the first is today, following the service at 1030, and in the bulletin, the second version of that, or when you're able to provide inputs, is 930 next Sunday, which is during the faith formation time. And what this does is, while the council has our best guess for what we think is, is there, it is really uh, the congregation's budget that all comes in from you, and we're stewards to do the will for that. So if you have a desire to see what that snapshot looks like now, to provide inputs for that, following these two Sundays, that next Tuesday, I believe it's the 22nd, the council meets and then what we do is we take all that, discuss it one more time and put it into as good a draft as possible and then on the 27th, the congregation council meeting, our semi-annual congregational meeting will be held and we will be approving that budget. So if you wanna have a say and you wanna understand what we've uh, tentatively set aside and you wanna be able to do something before we get to the point where we're voting on it now is that time. I humbly invite you. One of the pieces to the budget forum that um, may be mentioned is that uh, we had some, well, a bit of kind of stress, anxiety in the middle of this last year about how things were looking in terms of income versus expenses. and. Um, tried our best to begin to communicate that to the congregation to say, wow, we're feeling nervous. <laughs> no, but um, by the end of the year, the response of the congregation was really um, humbling to us as church leadership so that, in fact, we ended up finishing the year not having to take anything out of our reserves, but, in fact, to have about 9000 above and beyond. And so we're just so very grateful for the generosity that has been extended. Um, that's, yeah, that's it. That's what I want to say. Um, would you please stand for a blessing? Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.